welcome to Pigeon River Farm, doing farming right. I'm Robert Brown, the owner of Pigeon River Farm. Thank you for viewing. Well, good evening. We're going to have the first of the series of these on-farm classes. So I want to thank you all in advance for attending. Uh, they're going to be modular form. Uh, they're what you had requested. So the first one is going to be using a drone on the farm. I know a lot of you are interested in what I've been doing here on the farm, uh, utilizing a drone for livestock management and other tasks. So it has been an incredibly useful tool. I've now done this for a lot of years. Uh, a lot of years being 2018 I started and I've run a drone full time uh, virtually every day for around 300 and probably 360 days a year. Uh, the drone is flown and multiple times. So it's an integral tool that's used here. So I know you might be thinking about doing this on your own farm for your own livestock needs. So we'll get going here and we'll start talking about what it is, what it does, why it does what it does. So uh, typically what we're going to do here, we, I decided to go with a Typhoon H by Unique. Uh, not saying that's the best one. It's the works for me. Uh, it's a six rotor drone design. I like the six rotor design and specifically to high wind. I fly in all conditions. I've flown in snow. Only thing I don't fly in is rain. They're not waterproof. But I have flown uh, in snow many, many a time and very high winds, as high as 40 miles an hour. So I don't have a lot of fear, I've got a lot of experience, so don't do this when you're just start, starting to learn. Uh, try to fly on calm days and work your way up to it. But the six rotor design is very stable, especially when you're getting in close to fences, um, where you're dealing around the livestock, I really want stability. So to me that, that is number one importance. Here we're doing a cattle inspection. Uh, this is, drone is used. We get in very, very close to the animals. I check for uh, pregnancy. I check for health of the calf. I check for health conditions of the cow. So if we're seeing any kind of uh, shedding of the fur, uh, I can look in very close. Now, especially being on a pasture, it's relatively hard to handle the, the cows. Uh, a lot of times, uh, try to get them in where you can do an examination on them is a, quite a project. Where here I can do a, an examination on a real regular basis with a lot of uh, detail. And since I'm shooting everything in 4K or real high resolution pictures, I can go back later on and I can view this information and make corrective actions. So it isn't only what I find through looking through the viewfinder, but it's what I can look at later. And again, it's easy if I need to get some advice uh, if we got some, a wound as an example, not a real common problem, but if we did have a wound, uh, but easy to send a picture, a high resolution picture of that wound to the vet or to a professional to get some advice on what to do. Now here's a, a we use the dogs and the drone to do the moving of the cattle. Uh, I'll send a drone out, I'll be utilizing the, the dogs to move them so I know exactly and the, between the two they actually work very efficiently. Uh, here's going to be an example of uh, video showing the drone basically behind this bull and getting the bull to move. So basically we're called harassment. We're simply going to harass that that animal with just the annoyance of the drone being behind it. Usually you can come in if you're steady and s stable, the cattle aren't going to move or not move much. But when you're wavering back and forth and making a lot of noise, they get tired of it and they simply will move. Well, again, uh, we're not having some technical difficulties here, but what we normally be doing here is the drone would be flying back and forth behind there. So we got to get the video to go. That's always the, uh, the challenge. I guess it's just not going to start no matter what I do. The next one is going to be checking pasture conditions. Uh, 
that's one thing that I use this for, uh, especially in the summer months. Uh, I'm flying out there determining when the cattle are going to be moved to the next paddock. I can get down close, I can see the overall condition. Uh, when you get an eye for this, you can actually do your what you normally do with your stick going out and measuring the grass height. Once you got a good reference for that, you can go out and you'll be pretty accurate. You can get down, fly in close, and check and see where where you're at. If the cattle are ready to be moved to next pasture. Plus, for long range surveys, I got a medium sized farm. I mean, not huge, but not small. And for me to walk everything off or waste all the fuel running the four wheeler around, I can simply take the drone out and see the pr progress of the grass. I can look at regrowth of the grass. And specifically, I can watch and see how the cattle are acting. If they're going to one location, if they're pretty well spread out like this one here they're pretty well spread out across the whole pasture and that's a real good indication we got continuity in other words our pasture or fertilizing plan our planting um, is all working out really good there isn't an area that has a less desirable taste so again keeping that in mind that's something to, to utilize the drone for uh, for looking at more than just the obvious for lots and lots of little details. <coughs> now, one thing that's been a real lifesaver around here is because we breed year round with the cattle, uh, need to check for calf birthing year round and specifically in the winter months because I want to make sure that everything is going well. So one of my main tasks every morning is to fly the drone out in the winter time, the cattle will typically hang where I either unroll the bale or if we're using a bunk feeder, depending on the situation. But if I will go out, do a quick scan, if I see a cow isolated, especially the highland cattle, they, are, they want to birth totally separated from the main herd. So in this particular case, the cow is way out, about a half mile from the farm. I go out, I check the condition of the calf. Everything's good, the baby's up moving, possibly nursing, and at that point there I can make a determination I need to go out and inspect or leave Mother Nature alone and she'll be back with the herd uh, as soon as the calf is strong enough. So, And when a calf is born, one of the things I highly recommend is to go out, check that animal multiple times per day. Uh, there again, very easy or not disturbing the cow. So here I am probably flying at about 75 feet and I am uh, doing an observation not enough to disturb the mother in any way she actually just takes care of the calf doesn't even know I'm there uh, I can l linger in the air for minutes uh, sometimes I'm flowing as long as five minutes just lingering and observing so something uh, something to consider the winter time use now there are some challenges with flying in winter time your battery life is normally about one third to one quarter that it is when it's say 80 degrees so something to really really keep in mind that you're going to be challenged with that portion here's an example of uh taking off here in uh the, that's my normal uh lift off and landing pad is the driveway by the shop and snow or not, away we go. So it looks like this video is going to possibly be a little more cooperative. Oh, that's a good thing. Yep, so we'll go out here, we'll check the condition of the, of the overall pasture to see if there's any cattle anywhere. So I'm doing a slow scan here, checking the overall condition of the pasture. And I'm also, will do is look and see if there's anything else, like fence compromised. If I have an animal down, and then I'm also, because I have the large high tunnels, I want to go ahead and do an inspection of the high tunnels. And so you can see here, and then... Uh, we see the ducks, uh, the layer ducks here are not real happy about this situation. 
Now this is a little older video. You, if you have been watching any of my other, uh, have been watching any of my videos, or you've been out here and uh, took a tour, you can see we have more additional high tunnels. Uh, so that isn't uh, complete. So this one, this video is from a little, a little, uh, a little couple years ago. And anyways, there we go. We go ahead and we check everything. I know on a slide here, not see it in a high high resolution. This would be in a 4K, and so we would actually be able to check the overall condition of the of the cattle um, and the goats that uh, may be located in there and see their eating characteristics. So them can all be determinations of the the health of the the herd. Now checking on the poultry. On pasture again very critical I go out every day this is a little more complicated because from a bird's perspective these are a predator so they're looking at these as a hawk so either you go and you go just do a slow hover at a relatively high altitude so they don't notice and move in slow or you get down close to the ground the thing is you cannot fly in say at a 45 degree angle that looks like a predator. So your normal descent like you would when you come in to check the cattle, goats, sheep, any of the ruminant animals, do not, under any circumstances, do that with the chickens or they will all flee. Uh, typically they'll flee right underneath the chicken mobile. So that's something to, to be very aware of, so that technique. I hope that was a little hint to all of you that you can apply in your own day-to-day -day, if you are doing pastured, pastured birds uh, that technique uh, it took me a while to discover that uh, I chased a lot of birds around before I realized that was a a good way to approach them. now for our beehives uh, we've been uh, using this now again for years to go out and check especially if they're fairly remote um, We've had some bear challenges, uh, as you see this year, not in this slide, but uh, this year now we've gone to complete fencing because we did have some bear damage. But it allows me to go out, check the condition, make sure, say we have a storm, anything of that nature, that the hives are in good shape, uh, see when the time is to mow around them. Them are all critical things, again, very handy. I can get in relatively close to the beehives, check the conditions make sure they're all viable and active and I don't have to get the suit on and go go out uh, if you've got a bigger farm you might be aware of this one where did I leave it uh, where on a farm you've left equipment may sound if you uh, you know I know most of you have a rural location here but say uh, you don't and you're just getting familiar with this or you have a smaller farm on a bigger operation I try often try to figure out where I've left what and what condition it's in. So here's an example going out and finding my gravity wagons. Uh, we got a manure spreader that's got uh, uh, fence posts in it. Uh, may sound really dumb, but I have had this before. Like, where did I leave that? And I fly it out and I go ahead and it's just part of my day to day. I don't necessarily make a special special trip, but it's like, okay, today might be spreading manure or something like that, and I need to go see where I possibly left it last. Here is something that really has been phenomenal. So again, from a couple years ago, uh, we were building a high tunnel. There was just two of us. This gets to be uh, trying to move, trying to move these big trusses uh, with just two guys is a real handful. So I just made up a little adapter for the forklift head on the, on the payloader and I move it in place, but I can't see where we are orientation wise. So here, what I'm doing is I have the drone in the air, videoing it down, and I'm actually using a drone, not my forward visual, to determine exactly where the posts are uh, for the orientation. It's crazy beneficial. You wouldn't think about it, but uh, this particular technique has been phenomenal. It really, it really worked good for me. Um, 
It says, uh, I don't know if you're going to be in this kind of a situation, but the drone work for that placement. So if you're doing any, any moving of large materials, you know, especially like setting trusses with backhoe or like this case with a, with a payloader, um, it was really neat. It was something that uh, solved the complex problem without having a spotter. Uh, poultry check. Uh, this is during the winter time. We have them in the high tunnel, and then we have a lot of a lot of birds here on the outside and, and ducks. And I just go ahead and do a quick check. Not really significant, but again, it's all part of that process. When I fly in the morning or fly in the evening, I'll go ahead and do my quick validation. Well, anyways, this concludes the first little mini class that we put together. Uh, we'll go out and do a tour and all that here, but I just thought this would be in a demonstration uh, of the drone in operation. But I thought this would be beneficial to all of you to understand how, why, what goes on with utilizing a drone on a farm. And you'll be able to make a decision if this is a good thing for you or not. So if we have any questions, we'll catch them as we're doing the walk route. Well, I want to thank you all for being quiet and patient and uh, and making it through it and we have uh, some coffee and uh, soda and some water in the back so we'll handle that and